All right, I'll admit it. For the last decade or so, I have not been Team Spider-Man. The other movies, uh, weren't good, so I didn't like the character. Until I saw Captain America Civil War. It's awesome, and Spider-Man is awesome in it. I'm back on Team Spider-Man, which got me thinking, do you actually need synthetic spider webs to swing around on? I'm pretty sure regular spider silk can turn you into a superhero. Spider-Man is famous for a lot of things, but perhaps most of all for his ability to rapidly swing around a city on his homemade spider silk. To figure out what kind of strength this silk would need to have, we have to look at how Spider-Man gets around. Spider-Man dips and dives and ducks and dodges, but his most basic form of movement is the parabolic arc. This is the kind of movement that his silk would need to stand up to uh, most of the time. Now for the physics. To find out how strong an actual line of spider silk would have to be, we have to look at the forces involved during one of these swings. And in a parabolic arc, the forces on the string are at the highest when it's at the bottom of this arc. So here you have Spider-Man, which is assumed to be a sphere, with a velocity going this way, a weight of gravity pulling Peter Parker down, or mass times acceleration due to gravity, and a tension in the string. This is what we're going to have to work with to determine the strength here. So the silk needs to be at least as strong as the difference between these two forces here. And from high school physics, we remember, of course you remember, that a force is also equal to mass times acceleration. So to find out the force that our silk strand would need to withstand, we need the average acceleration at the bottom of Spider-Man's swing. Oh, wait. Wait, gravity, right? Oh, kiss me, Mary Jane. <laughs> All right, it's not exactly intuitive, but when something is swinging on an arc, its acceleration is actually pointed towards the center of that arc, and it has a velocity that's tangential to the circle of that arc. But finding the acceleration is a little bit more complicated than this. What sound does shooting webs make? Anyway, if Spider-Man was traveling in an arc, then he would have a velocity at this point and that point. And he would have a change in velocity between his positions that looks something like the difference between those two, like that. So, if you move these arrows around and compare them to the radius of this arc R and the distance that Spider-Man basically moves in the arc S, you get two similar triangles. And if you compare these two triangles, you get a relationship. S over R equals delta V, or the change in velocity, over V. And if you simplify this even further and substitute some stuff in, you get the equation. And what is delta V, or the change in velocity, over the change in time? Yes. Oh yes, I sense it. I'm tingling. It's acceleration. Ooh. Whew. You still with me? It's a lot of physics. But all of that is to say that our silk needs to be at least as strong as this equation says. And all we need to know is Spider-Man's mass, the average speed of the bottom of his swing, and how long the radius of that arc is going to be. It turns out for the average swing, actual spider silk should fare just fine. According to Marvel, Spider-Man is 167 pounds. And let's also assume that the average velocity of his swing is maybe the same speed as a car navigating city traffic, around 15 meters per second, around 35 miles an hour. It's about that fast, <laughs> probably. So let's assume the rest of our numbers and plug and chug, as professors still weirdly say. Uh, let's assume that Spider-Man fires a 10 meter long piece of web, around 30 feet. Then the tension in that string at that speed would be around 1,700 newtons, which is like having a 400 pound fish on the other end of your fishing line. But that's a low end estimate. What if we doubled Peter's swing speed because velocity is what really matters in that equation because it's squared, right? Well, if you do that, then you get 6,800 newtons, which is like swinging around an adolescent dairy cow around on a kite string. That is a weird, that is a weird comparison to make. Oh, 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 I webbed. So if we're in the thousands of Newtons range, how strong is natural spider silk? Well, let me put it to you this way. It totally lives up to its reputation. The strength of spider silk, or how much force it can support per 
Ross sectional area is 1.75 gigapascals, which is 1.75 billion newtons per square meter of spider silk. And if Peter Parker is using a width of spider silk, does the same width of this dot, which I think is reasonable, then it could still support 100,000 newtons of force, around 20,000 pounds on the end of that line. That is 60 times more than any swing that we thought of would subject that line to. Nature, man, it's always coming up with stuff better. You can mess around with the numbers, but in the realistic range of line lengths and swing speeds, a reasonably thick piece of actual spider silk would have no problem supporting Peter Parker as he swung around a city. And isn't that kind of cooler than some gawky teenager uh, building his own little web shooters? He actually has a secret underground uh, basement beneath Aunt May's house where he's harvesting thousands and thousands of pounds of silk from hundreds of thousands of spiders on tiny little wheel contraptions. The only part of this that doesn't work is that he'd have to carry dozens and dozens of pounds of spider silk on his wrist, which doesn't really work, and you'd have to fire it out at you know, dozens and dozens of feet, which is hard, but Iron Man is there to figure that out now, and maybe a future episode of this show, because science. Wow. Thank you so much for watching and a special shout out to Audrey Longshore for her support. Now, a lot of people have been asking me, how do Spider-Man's eyes work in uh, Captain America Civil War? Well, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, he has enhanced visual input after he got his power. So he's getting almost too much stimulus into his eyes and he gets overwhelmed. So what Tony Stark did feasibly was create a suit with aperture-like eyes, like a lens on a camera would have to control the amount of light or stimulus that would get into Peter Parker's head so he can adequately focus and hone in on his spider senses and uh, kick butt on Team Iron Man. Okay, I can't say this enough, but Spider-Man in Captain America Civil War is so good. Oh man, it's funny, engaging, powerful, interesting, back on board, but, one but, there's nothing about Spider-Man that is spider related. Okay, he grows little things out of his skin and he crawls on walls. Okay, but geckos do that too. And uh, he doesn't shoot his webs out of organic spinnerets, which would be on his butt, coming out and wouldn't smell great, and he'd be launching it to get around. Not spider-like. Spiders do not have spider senses. Some spiders can sense movement if they're on the web, but that's because they're already on the web and they're feeling for vibrations. Uh, so no such thing as a spider sense. And, and spiders aren't, uh, they're strong, but they're not, you know, crazily strong. So there's nothing about Spider-Man that is spider-like and he shouldn't be Spider-Man. He should be like Gecko Man with sweet abs. <laughs> but not Spider-Man. But he's still cool. <laughs>